Give Jesus a shout of praise in this place once. You can do better than that. All right, while you're standing, every hand lifted up in the air, pray this with me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, speak to my heart. Change my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all can be seated. God is good, amen? We're going to dive right into it. So I got 30 minutes. Open up your Bibles to John chapter 10, the Gospel of John chapter 10. John chapter 10, beginning in verse 10. Jesus said, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Right? The three characteristics of the devil are stealing, killing, and destroying. The main characteristics of your heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, life and life more abundantly. He goes on to say in verse 11, he says, I am. The good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees, listen to this, the hireling flees because the hireling does not care about the sheep. And have you guys ever wondered if God cares about you? Ever sit alone in your room and ask the question, God, are you really here? Where have you gone? Why have you forsaken me? I don't feel your presence. I don't feel your joy. I don't see you doing anything in my life. I'm reminded of when the disciples were following Jesus in a boat, one calm afternoon and they got in and they began to sail and all of a sudden the you guys know the story the winds pick up the waves pick up and all of a sudden the boat begins to take on water and it gets lower and lower and lower into the the sea and the disciples run over to Jesus who's apparently sleeping in a boat and they wake him up and they say master we're perishing do you not even care do you not even care. See, a lot of times if we're honest, that's been our heart's cry. We've said, God, where are you? Do you even care? You see, your heavenly father, Jesus Christ himself, he's not simply a hireling. He is the good shepherd. He laid his life down for you. And the Bible says that if God did not spare his one and only son, how will he not, on, not only give you all good things? Jesus is a good shepherd. He goes on to say, I am, verse 14, the good shepherd, and I know my sheep. Let me encourage you this morning, your heavenly father knows you. Your heavenly Father sees you. Your heavenly Father cares for you. Hebrews 4, 4 to 6, 14 to 16 says, So then, since we have a great high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. This high priest of ours, he understands our weaknesses, for he has faced all of the same testings we do yet he did not seen so let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God there we will receive his mercy and he and we will find grace to help us when we need it most you see Jesus is a good shepherd 
He knows how to be a good shepherd. Why? Because at one point, he was a sheep. It's kind of, you know, as I was sitting here thinking about this, Jesus was a good shepherd, but he was also the sacrificial lamb. So every single thing that you've gone through, been through, are going to go through here in this life, according to Hebrews chapter 4, Jesus has already gone through it. He sees you. He knows you. He told uh, the prophet Jeremiah, he said, before you were even formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. He's a good shepherd. Jesus is a good shepherd. He says, I know my sheep. But then he goes on to say, and I am known by them. Do you know him this morning? Do you know your shepherd this morning? You know, we're, we're here at, at North Point Bible College. I'm safe to assume everyone within the sound of my voice knows Jesus as their Lord and Savior. But do you know him on a more intimate level than that? Do you know him as your healer? Do you know him as your provider? Do you know him as your righteousness? Do you know him as your guide? Do you know him as your shepherd, the one who cares for you? Paul in Philippians, he said, I once, after, after listing all of his accolades, he said, I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared to the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have dis- discarded everything else, counting it all as rubbish that I could gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I became righteousness through faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. He says, I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. You see, you have a good shepherd this morning. He knows you. Do you know him? It's not simply enough to come to class and study and know a lot about your shepherd. You have to know your shepherd. Verse 27, uh, Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice. Do you know the voice of your shepherd? Do you spend time in the word of God? A lot of times we say, God, I want to hear your voice. You'll never hear the voice of God if you don't read the word of God. You'll never know it. As a matter of fact, you'll come to hear crazy voices in your head thinking it's God speaking to you. You have to start with the word. My sheep, they know my voice. Do you know his word? And as you know his word, you'll come to know his voice. Then he goes on and says, I know them and they follow me. How closely are you following your shepherd this morning? Do you know him? Can you hear him? Do you understand him? Do you seek after him? Are you following him? Jesus said, if anyone wants to come after me, he must first deny himself, pick up his cross, and then what? Follow me. Everyone under the sound of my voice, you have a call of God in your life. But let me tell you, every call comes with a cross. Every call comes with a cross. Are you willing to pick up the cross that that Jesus Christ has asked you to bear and lay everything aside and follow him? Because let me tell you, the moment you pick up your cross and you give it all, you get it all right back. Why? Because the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus, your shepherd, came that you might have a life and have it more abundantly. Every call has a cross, but every cross carries a crown. Every call has a cross, but every cross carries a crown. Go with me to Psalms chapter 23. And this, I guess, is where I begin. (laughs) Buckle up. All right, Psalms 23. David, nearing the end of his life, he says, The Lord 
is my shepherd. There it is, my shepherd. Here we see the intimacy in the relationship that David had between his heavenly father. He didn't say the Lord is a shepherd. The Lord is a Lord. The Lord is, he said the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Is he your shepherd? Say that, my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. He's your shepherd. He's my shepherd. But we are the ones that have to follow after him and allow him to be my shepherd. He goes on to say, I shall not want. See, there are many benefits that we see through all throughout Scripture for serving the Lord, for following the Lord. And this morning, I, I want to encourage you about things you can expect in your life when you make the Lord your shepherd. He goes on, he says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 8, he said, Your heavenly Father knows what you need before you even ask. Sheep are not responsible for their daily provisions. They're responsible for staying close with their shepherd. Their shepherd leads them. Their shepherd guides them. Their shepherd provides for them. Their shepherd protects them. Every single thing that a sheep could ever need in its life is all linked to how close they follow the shepherd. You might be facing something insurmountable where you need something in your life. You need God to come through. All I want to do is encourage you to just get closer to the shepherd. It's there. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. David also said in Psalms 37, 25, he said, I have been young and now I am old, but I have never seen the righteous forsaken or his descendants begging for bread. You were not destined to be a beggar here on this earth. You were destined to carry the blessings of God. The blessings of God, not begging. You weren't meant for begging. You were meant for blessing. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I want. Psalms 80, 84, 11 says, No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly before him. Psalm 34, 10 says, The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall lack no good thing. Therefore, Jesus reiterated, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. If the Lord's your shepherd, you'll never want for anything. Never want for anything. Verse 2, he makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. This speaks of peace. You know, peace is peace and tranquility in life is something that money can't buy. You know, it's like you can have it all and have no peace inside of you. You could have it all and have absolutely no peace. But the word of God says, he makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You know, sheep, something interesting about sheep, I'm not a shepherd um, in the natural. Uh, I don't own any sheep. I don't ever care to own any sheep. They smell. Um, You know, they nip at you if you ever try and pet them, you know. But one thing about sheep, if you're around them a lot, is sheep are very restless. They actually, at, at night, they don't, they don't sleep a lot. They, they actually, like, nap throughout the day. So, they, on average, they sleep about five hours a night. So, I, I could identify as a sheep in that aspect, right? So, they, sheep, they, they sleep intermittently. They're very restless. They're very skittish. You know, it doesn't take much to scare a sheep. Um, try it sometime. You know, they have, the, they have those videos floating around on YouTube, and like the fainting sheep, you boo, and they all fall over, right? Sheep are very skittish. They run. I mean, you could have a, a whole field full of sheep, and, and, and like a rabbit runs out in the middle, and they just all take off. They're scared of everything. Man, aren't we like sheep sometimes? Hmm. We're just like the slightest thing gets us anxious. The slightest, th- the slightest things gets us discouraged. Worried, fearful, unable to sleep at night. 
But the Bible says he leads you beside green pastures and still waters. Philippians 4, 6 says, Be anxious for nothing but in everything with prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your peace or let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. And then Jesus in one of his last uh, interactions with his disciples, he says, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is is a gift the world cannot give. So do not be troubled or afraid. Jesus wants you to stay close to him so that you abide in his peace this morning. So you have provision and you have peace. And then we go on to uh, verse 3. The Bible says, he restores my soul. We serve a God of restoration this morning. You know, when I was looking up that, that word soul, I'm not a Hebrew scholar. I'll divert that to Brother Hodge. Um, he restores my soul. That word soul is a soul, a living being, a life, a person, a desire, a passion, an appetite, or an emotion. We serve a God of restoration this morning. And I want to park here for a little bit. Um, You know, when I was preparing this message, I felt, you know, talk about the blessings, you know, of being God's sheep. And uh, yesterday when I was just in chapel and then even uh, Pastor Mark came up and shared Isaiah 61. You can flip there if you want. Um, Totally unplanned, but. This, this was a, a scripture that the Lord told me to read. And uh, so I'm going to read it again. Go to Isaiah 61. He restores my soul. I believe there's some people under the sound of my voice that you're here, you're serving God, you're following him, but you need restoration. There's something in your life that needs to be rebuilt. There's relationships that need to be restored. There's things that you've lost that need to be brought back into you. Maybe your emotions are out of whack, but you need restoration. So go to Isaiah 61. And this is a passage of scripture that we are all familiar with because somebody once said it. The good shepherd. In Luke chapter 4, Isaiah 61 says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all. All those who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. Some of you guys need to just praise the Lord. The enemy has tried to put a spirit of heaviness on you, and it's actually driven you out from the presence of God, thinking God did it to you. And the enemy wins when you turn his trick back on your heavenly father and refuse to praise God in spite of what you're seeing. You see, God wants to give you a spirit of praise for, or a garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. That they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. And they, listen to this, have this underlined. And they will rebuild old ruins. And they will raise up former desolations. And they will repair the ruined city. Some of you in here this morning, God is going to rebuild your life. He's going to raise you back up. And he's going to repair everything that is broken because we have a shepherd who is in the business of restoration. He's in the business of restoration. So I don't know what you've gone through this semester. Your your heart might be broken. Your emotions might be shattered. You may have had relationships severed. You may have lost all hope, lost all desire, lost all passion to pursue the thing that God's asking you to. But he's going to restore you this morning because he is a good shepherd. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, 
I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You know, I'd be lying if I stood here before you this morning and said, the moment you decide to pick up your cross and follow Jesus, that you wouldn't face any trouble in this world. Jesus himself even said, in this world you will have trouble. Trouble comes with living in a a fallen world, living in a sin-ridden world. We will face trouble. But it doesn't end there. He says, but take heart. I have overcome the world. There's no trouble that you might find yourself in this morning that the Lord can't just lead you right out. Why? Because the Bible says that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You see, if I'm being honest, a lot of times rather than just walking through the trouble, we decide to wander around in it. I'll say that again. Instead of just walking through the trouble, we wander around in it. Sometimes we, by our own choices, choose to stay in the trouble rather than seeing that the Lord's just going to take us through. See, you weren't designed to live in trouble. You were designed to live in tranquility. Yes, trouble will come, but Jesus will lead you through it. You don't have to stay in a situation. You don't have to stay in a moment. You don't have to stay in a broken heart, in a broken home, in a broken situation. You don't have to stay in the trouble. You just have to walk through it. You just have to walk through it. Isaiah 43 says, But now thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame even scorch you, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. Again, Jesus said, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. This morning you're coming out of your situation. This morning, he's restoring back to you everything you lost, everything you gave up, everything the enemy tried to take. Why? Because he is your good shepherd. Do you know him this morning? You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Verse 6. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Surely, absolutely, 100%. Surely the good, oh, surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. This speaks of expectation. This speaks of hope. This speaks of faith. This speaks of how you view your heavenly father, a sheep in his pasture. The, the Bible says that trouble chases sinners, but blessings pursue the righteous. Say, surely and surely your goodness and your mercy follow me all the days of your life. Some of you, you, you've lost sight of that because you've wandered in the valley of the shadow of death rather than walking through. You haven't seen God do much in your life. And so it's hard for you to expect the reality that God wants to bless you. But he does. He does. I'll back up. You know, I skipped over. You prepared a, a table for me in the presence of my enemies. That's a powerful verse. That's a powerful verse. Why? You know, and I, years ago I was, I was, uh, I, I, I actually think I was sitting right over here. And the Lord gave me like a revelation of this verse where it's just like, man, the table, it's a place of rest. It's a place of relaxation. It's a place of fellowship. It's a place of food. You know, food, fun, and fellowship. The, the, the three Pentecostal Fs, right? The table. It's the table. And, and, and he says, in spite of anything that's going on around you, I got a table for you to just sit at. 
And I was reminded in, I, b- I believe it's 2 Kings chapter 6, where Elisha is, is telling uh, the, ki- the king of Israel where all the, the, the Syrian armies camping at. And, and the king of Syria gets really angry and he's like, I'm going to go kill that prophet so that I can actually beat the nation of Israel. So he finds out where Elisha is and he goes and he besieges the city. Right? He besieges the city. There's no way out. There's no way in. They're coming for you. You may feel like there's no way out. There's no way in, and somebody's coming for you. And the story goes, the the prophet's uh, servant wakes up and sees the army, and like any natural man, he'd be like, holy smokes, we're finished. Look at this. And Elisha, I can only think, he just kind of like wakes up, shugs his shoulders, makes a cup cup of coffee, you know, is getting ready for the day. And he said, oh, don't be afraid. Why? Because those that are with me are more than those that are against me. And, and, and his servant's probably thinking, what are you, nuts? There's two. We have two. They have thousands. And he said, oh, Lord, but open his eyes. And in that moment, the eyes of, of the servant were opened, and it said that there were heavenly armies and angels and horses and chariots surrounding him so he could sit at the table and rest. Why? Because the Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He said he charges his angels, sets up an encampment around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Whatever you're facing this morning, God God will just deliver you. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. All you have to do is believe. All you have to do is know the heart of your shepherd. He wants to provide for you. He wants to lead you by peace. He wants to restore you. He wants to deliver you out of your trouble. He wants to set you on a path where the goodness and mercies and blessings of God follow you all the days of your life. Lindsay, you want to come up and play something? So this morning, if you need restoration, we're going to end focusing on that. If you need restoration and you're being honest... And you say, I have allowed things in my life. See, sometimes, sometimes we allow ourselves to get broken, broken down. Sometimes there's things beyond your control. Sometimes they're within your control. Mistakes you made, there's consequence for your actions sometimes. But if we're being honest and you would say, Jake, there's something in my life that I need restored back to perfect position, place, health. Whether it's physical, spiritual, emotional, financial, relational, anything like that. If you have something in your life that needs to be restored, you have a good shepherd. He restores your soul. He restores your being. He restores your emotions. He restores your passion. Let's let's go. Sometimes passion goes by the wayside at a Bible college. You have to be intentional, disciplined. Maybe you need restoration. If you need restoration this morning, come forward and come quickly. If you need restoration, come forward. You know, maybe you're here this morning and you came to this school and you've, you're at a point where you've wondered why now to where it just doesn't make sense and you're thinking about leaving. I just feel that, that prompting. You're thinking about leaving because you don't know why. The Lord wants to restore that passion, that pursuit, that desire for his presence, for his call, for his purpose in your life this morning. So if you're thinking about leaving and you don't want to, but there's something pulling you, come down. He's a God of restoration. I'll give it one more second. All right, for those of you that are in the back, would you stand up? I'd ask that you would stretch out your hand. we're just going to pray and we're going to believe God right because what good is it praying if we don't actually believe that God's able to do something you have to have faith the Bible says without faith it's impossible to please God so if anyone comes to him he must first believe that he is and what believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him you've been seeking him you've been crying out but you haven't yet received anything this morning 
you will receive restoration in Jesus' name.